Friday was a crucial day for Ukraine, Russia, the U.S. and its European allies. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov met in Geneva with the intention to defuse escalating tensions between Russia and Ukraine. Joining us now is Washington Post national security reporter Shane Harris. Shane was actually one of the first to break the story of Russia moving their troops to the Ukrainian border. Shane, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to Capital Review. So we've been hearing all about the military presence on the ground, but can you tell us more about that? What is the current situation on the border right now? Right now, we see about 100,000 Russian military forces massed on the eastern border of Ukraine and also in positions in the south, uh, as well as heavy weaponry and all of the material that those forces would need to launch an invasion and to sustain one and have the supply lines to do so. So really, they are there ready to go uh, at, at the order of Vladimir Putin, uh, presumably at a moment's notice. U.S. officials say they don't know what his intentions are, but they are standing by on his orders and could launch a significant ground invasion. So for those who may not be familiar with the situation, eight years ago, Russia invaded and they annexed. They took the Crimean Peninsula from Ukraine and Russia made it theirs. That was back in 2014. Now you fast forward to today and like you said, they're scaling up their troops. So what does Russia want with this region in Ukraine now and why is the U.S. getting involved in this time? Well, Vladimir Putin sees particularly this portion of eastern Ukraine as very culturally and historically identified with Russia. I think, frankly, he sees much of the whole country that way as well. It is a former Soviet republic, of course. Um, but he has wanted to extend his kind of sphere of influence into that region for some time. There are uh, forces there that are uh, identified as rebel forces against the Ukrainian government that have Russian sympathies. I think in reality, they are essentially operating as effective Russian proxy forces. So he's kind of been in this region in some way for quite some time. And now the concern is that he might want to like actually officially annex it. The U.S. is getting involved because Ukraine is an ally. It's a very important regional ally. And of course, the United States does not want to see Russia uh, invading sovereign countries for one thing, but also extending its influence and trying to further destabilize potentially even neighbors of Ukraine, which are members of the NATO alliance. So the United States is really trying to, you know, to, to, to stop this particular incursion here, not just because of the, the uh, sovereign concerns about our ally Ukraine, but whether this could, because this could signal perhaps further expansion and aggression by Putin to other countries as well. Yeah, and how that could extend. So let's talk about the meeting that happened Friday between Secretary Blinken and Foreign Minister Lavrov. There hasn't really been progress on this before. So what is President Putin in Russia asking the U.S. to do? Because we know from the past that he hasn't shied away from asking for something in return in order to back off. So what are Putin's demands? Russia has made some pretty extreme demands. The biggest one is that they essentially want to guarantee that Ukraine will never become a member of the NATO alliance. This, of course, is the alliance of European countries and the United States that has been really the bedrock of security in Europe for, for decades. Um, practically speaking, the United States cannot give that assurance. It's not up to the United States to say who comes into NATO. Uh, Ukraine has said that they want to be a member of it. So that's kind of his big one. He also wants other assurances that the United States will limit uh, or in some cases maybe even cease military operations or training exercise or certain kinds of support for Ukraine. These essentially are non-starters though. These are really big demands that Russia, I think, knows that the United States can't meet. There may be something less of kind of a security assurance that the United States could give uh, to Moscow. But at this point, these demands are uh, essentially non-starters in the negotiation, I think. So Shane, what happens next? How far do you think the U.S. will go to reach a compromise? Was there anything that Secretary Blinken asked during this meeting for Russia to do as a way to kind of level Putin's demands? Well, they have these written demands that the United States is, is, going, is considering, I guess we might say. They might try to meet again. Uh, I've talked to some sources who suggest that Russia is eager to perhaps have another very senior high-level meeting, uh, possibly even between President Biden and Putin. We don't know. But the Biden administration is very determined to try and to, 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 to de-escalate this through negotiation. The United States is not going to send troops to Ukraine. I don't think that's a realistic scenario, but they are uh, willing to provide financial assistance, uh, weapons. We've seen other European countries providing weapons as well. And of course, they're sending very strong signals to Moscow that any invasion will be met with severe economic sanctions. All right, so let's talk about that. What is the worst that the U.S. could do in terms of sanctions when they say that there will be massive consequences for Russia if they do move forward with an invasion? 
The worst thing they could do, and it may not be on the table anymore, we're getting signals that it's not, uh, would be to try and get Russia to be decoupled from what's called the SWIFT system, which is this international money transfer system that's kind of like a circulatory system for how money moves around the world. Basically kind of a financial embargo or blockade, you could think of it, of Ukraine cutting them off from the banking system. There are sort of less severe sanctions that could be leveled at individuals in the Russian government, uh, Russian corporations. We've sanctioned Russia pretty heavily but there is more on the table. Uh, there are some people who would actually like to see the United States uh, individually go after uh, Russians who are living in the United States, perhaps even the children of some powerful oligarchs who are here working or studying, revoke their visas, send them home, kind of get to the people who are around Putin and have influence in Russia and make their lives harder. But we, we, the important to, to stress here, these would all be economic measures. I think that the scenario is not on the table that the United States would send troops or even start engaging militarily from the air. These are really punishing economic and financial sanctions. And the administration has been trying to telegraph as much as possible to Russia what those are so that they'll back down. All right, Washington Post national security reporter Shane Harris, thank you so much for being here and for your time. You're welcome, thanks for having me. All right, we'll be back with more when we come back. You're watching Capitol Review.